In this series, we're developing a front-end for a CRUD application with React. End goal is to build an app where users can store their RPG characters, edit and share them with other players. Check the description for a link to current commit on GitHub repo. Hi, I am Smok, a senior full stack developer, and today we'll cover how to build navigation and routing in our app, and we'll install our first dependency. This will allow us to set up a simple web page with a few sub pages. All right, so we are back in our editor. Let's start by quickly creating two components, a navbar component, which will contain few links in to our sub pages and a page component, which will render something within a div. I'm going to add new folder here, components. And in there, we are going to add new file, navbar.js and new file page navbar is going to export by default function navbar. Well, it will return our navigation bar. That should be it. So uh, let's go ahead and add this navigation into our app component we will replace these. We are no longer going to be using those and we need to import them. So nav bar from components nav bar. And that's it. Okay, and now I'm going to add this component in. Just like that, save. And in our Chrome, we can see that we have our nav bar. And if I press the buttons at the top, we have the links. Okay. So that's uh, working as expected. Let's go back to Atom. And now let's create our page component. So it's going to go like this. Export type by default function page. And we will capture props. Right, and we are going to return div with props.children. Children is a special prop. To set its value, we can either uh, do it as usual with an XML argument. So I'm going to show this uh, like that. Children value. Of course, we need to import our page. And we can see in our Chrome that the value is present. Right, so we can uh, set its value as usual with this argument or wrap the value between opening and closing tags. So this will allow us to have this value in here. So I'll go ahead and add three of these pages over here. My page A, B and C. So now after saving and going to Chrome, we can see that all of them are visible at the same time. That's all great, but we only need to show one of them when user clicks on the right link. So how we are going to do that? Well, we are going to use React Router DOM. This is a node package that we can add with a single command npm install React Router DOM. Let's do it. I'm going to stop the server with Ctrl C npm install react router dom. All right, uh, let's restart our server. npm start. To use router package, we'll have to import appropriate symbols from the module. We do it in our app.js, like so. Import browser router switch and route from React Router. Exactly as we did before. And now what we are going to do is wrap everything in our app in a router component. That would allow us to use the other components for a router. I'm just gonna replace the fragment component. 
And next, what we need to do is wrap our sub page components in switch. So this part is fixed, it's visible always. And this bit is going to be used depending on the route that we are going to pass. So switch, and a switch. And now we'll create three route components that will contain our pages. So let's do it like so. Route. Route. route components will be checked by browser router and if the pattern specified in the path is matching the current URL, its children will be rendered. Let's fill the path uh, properties with values that we specified in our nav bar A, B and C. So we have three routes. Save and open the Chrome. Okay, the sub pages are gone. Now we can click on the links. That's great. Uh, on the surface, everything seems to work correctly. Each sub page is only displayed when the URL matches the path. We replicated the functionality of plain HTML pages, and that's great. But React allows us to go further and avoid unnecessary reloading from the server each time we click on the link. It's really simple. All we have to do is import a link component from React Router in our nav bar and replace plain HTML anchor tags with it. Our ref attribute will become a to prop. Just double check that you are importing it like that. Let's go ahead and go to Chrome. Great, now we can no longer see the refresh happening. It's almost perfect, but unknowingly, we created another issue that is impossible to notice just yet. Routing is done in the browser by JavaScript. Webpack server that we use locally for development is smart enough to know that if URL typed in the address doesn't exist as a static asset, it's not a CSS file or JPEG present in the public directory, it should just fall back to index.html. And you will see the right route even if you type this in URL manually. Sadly, this isn't the case for many other servers, which you might be using for your production website. Instead, you will be presented with 404 web page. I use Apache, which can be configured to behave like Webpack by creating a .htaccess file in root directory. Remember to use the dot at the beginning of the file. Let's go ahead and create one in our public directory. I won't explain this line by line, but generally, if requested file exists, it will be served. Otherwise, Apache will return data from index.html, which will load my React application and have it handle the correct routing in JavaScript by the browser. If you're not using Apache as your production server, check the Stack Overflow link in the description. If you want to copy this particular file, look into the final comment at the end of this video. Now we have our basic routing set up. It's time to discuss URL parameters. Sooner or later, we'll need to handle dynamically generated links, which contain identifiers, values submitted by the user, and virtually anything that isn't known before publishing the app. This is done with special named placeholders that capture values provided by the user. All we have to do is put a colon and a name in the pattern and we'll have a placeholder. For example, we can go with something like slash user slash ID colon ID. First two sections are constant. Uh, anything that starts with exactly slash user slash ID will match and anything that goes after the ID will be captured as a route parameter named ID. We can mark the parameter optional by putting a question mark after its name. Let's try it out with our page component. We'll additionally print an ID parameter. So we are going to import the use params first. So, and then we are going to let ID 
B use params. So let's first check if ID exists. If not, ID return. Okay, and now print it here. Save this, save that, and go to our Chrome. So we can see that we need to provide params. And let's go and do so. User ID 10. As you can see, it's in here. It's visible, it's working. It can be anything. This is all for today. We learned how to install an external dependency and set up browser router with parameterized routes. In next video, we'll create a snazzy UI using material design framework. Be sure to subscribe so you won't miss it.